ABB's 2600T series pressure transmitters are widely recognized for providing consistent, accurate and stable pressure measurement and are available in more than 3 million variants. Used all over the world, they can be found in a wide variety of applications, from offshore platforms, power stations, chemical plants, pulp and paper plants, in water and wastewater treatment, through to food and sanitary applications and many more. Let's take a look at a typical ABB pressure transmitter based on inductive sensing technology. A pressure transmitter is composed of two different parts, the so-called top works, including the housing and its components, and the bottom works. The top works includes the communication module, the optional indicator, and the terminal block. Inside the bottom works, we find the process chambers, the flanges, and the transducer. Inside the transducer are the primary electronic cartridge, the separating diaphragms, and the sensor, the real heart of the instrument. Our six pressure transmitter factories in Europe, USA and Asia are certified to leading international quality and environmental standards, including ISO 9001 and ISO 14001 respectively. Let's now look at how we make one. When raw materials arrive, an operator carries out a positive material identification or PMI test. In this test, the metal is analyzed to make sure it has the right chemical composition and complies with our order to the supplier. Bars are cut automatically, with every single piece being carefully sized. In order to remove the manufacturing burrs, all pieces are washed by means of ecologic cleaners and then tumbled. The cells need to go through two heat treatment processes in a controlled atmosphere. This second operation ensures that the cells have all the desired mechanical characteristics. The unfinished cells are now transferred to the workshop where a lathe turns every single part automatically. Once the turning has been carried out, the cells are placed inside the appropriate rack. The cells are now machined by spark erosion, sandblasted and then cleaned. After all these phases, each cell is checked by our quality department. During this process, an ABB robot draws the cells from a conveyor belt to the precision lathe. After finishing, the cells are removed from the lathe and cleaned. Surface planarity is now checked with a micrometer comparator. Now we will see the manufacture and assembly of the entire transducer. The raw components of the transducers are taken from a spindle and automatically machined according to specific physical and mechanical characteristics. Our stringent quality system carefully tests all the dimensional tolerances with all measurements automatically checked using a combined mechanical and optical system. The unfinished transducers are now placed inside a machine that will automatically make the hydraulic circuit. Then, the transducers are cleaned through a multi-phase cleaning bath to ensure the effective removal of any remaining manufacturing burrs or lubricating oils. Cleanliness is one of the key factors for delivering a reliable sensor. The clean room is an environment with a low controlled level of pollutants. The clean room is the area where the specialized robotized stations perform the manufacturing of the inductive sensor. The use of automation is crucial to meet the need for precision, cleanliness and repeatability of the process. A robotized station assures the polishing of the cells, then a second station makes the bonding of the inductive pickup within the sensor cell. See how the robot photographs the points of deposition of the glue to verify the proper location and quantity. Next, the feed-through is inserted into the cell and laser welded. The sensor diaphragms, which may be of different thicknesses, are now equipped with a disc and its ferrite core. 
a helium leak test ensures the process has been correctly carried out. Another robotized station, after inserting the sensor diaphragm, proceeds with sensor assembly, with the two half cells welded together. Before the next phase, a second automatic helium leakage test is carried out on the sensor. A robotized island fully automatically picks and welds the processed diaphragms onto the body of the transducer, with more automatic helium leakage tests being performed. The processed diaphragm is laser welded on the transducer body. A robot then completes the transducer assembly. At this stage, flame arresters, which are mandatory for any instruments that will be used in hazardous areas, are inserted and welded together. The last robotized station connects the sensor to the transducer body installing and welding the sensor protection. Once the assembly process is completed, the transducers are moved into the filling area, where they are placed inside autoclaves that are brought to a pressure close to full vacuum. The fluid flows into them under vacuum and occupies the free volume within each of the transducers. De-aeration of the fluid is absolutely essential to achieve performance in long-term reliability and stability. On completion of the filling, the transducers are ready to move to the next manufacturing phase. The transducers coming from the clean room are next pressurized up to the maximum working pressure in order to check their hydraulic and mechanical resistance. All transducers are registered inside the database of our production system. After potting the sensor, an operator assembles the primary electronic module and fills it with resin, protecting the entire sensor housing. The compensation phase starts with the aging procedure. During this procedure, specific climate chambers will stress the transducers until the mechanical structures reach an excellent physical stability. After the aging phase, the bottom works will be thermally treated to let them face the real working conditions. A cycle ensures that all pressure and temperature limits are tested. The system will detect the output signal value at every single pressure and temperature step and will calculate sensor-specific compensation coefficients. These coefficients allow the calculation of accuracy of the sensor, even when the most important parameters are changing a lot. After all these complex calculations, the system will check if the sensor works within the stated performance. The compensation phase is now finished and transducers are ready to be stocked and used for assembly. The last phase of the transmitter manufacturing process starts with kitting. Following an order entered in the company computer system, an assembly cycle begins. All the necessary parts are loaded in a specifically numbered, well-identified basket that will accompany the transmitter throughout the assembly process. A laser printing system automatically prints the identification and certification tags and discharges them into the relevant basket. The operator detects the work identification code and installs the transmitter housing onto the transducer, installs the communication board module, the terminal block, and fixes the metal identification and certification tags. The basket containing the semi-assembled transmitter then moves to the calibration area. 
the operator initiates a combined electrical insulation and overpressure test. Next, the transmitter is installed in the pressurized slot of the calibration station. Once identified from the production system, it will automatically undergo wet calibration. Customer data will also be downloaded as specified directly in the purchase order. The calibration system verifies the accuracy of the instrument and releases the calibration report that will be stored with the instrument in its own basket. The basket then moves to the last stage of assembly where all remaining parts left in the basket are installed. All the specified certificates, together with the operating manual, are included in an envelope which is housed in evidence in the transmitter packaging. The transmitter is ready for shipment. ABB manufactures its own diaphragm seals. The transmitters equipped with diaphragm seals follow a dedicated path during the assembly phase. The first step consists of welding the diaphragm onto the body of the seal. The diaphragm seal is then loaded into a pneumatic press to create the convolutions of the diaphragm. A new helium leakage test is performed to ensure perfect sealing of the diaphragm seal. The diaphragm spring rate characteristics and the displacement volumes are measured for every individual diaphragm seal manufactured. These values will be used during the filling phase. The stainless steel cups that will hold the capillary are now laser welded to the pressure transducer. Perfect sealing of the welds is checked again by a helium test. A specialized operator then welds the capillary and the armor to the diaphragm seat body. The transducer is now connected and welded to the opposite end of the capillary and is ready for the filling phase. The diaphragm seal's hydraulic circuit is evacuated of air and the filling fluid is poured into the hydraulic circuit. Then the assembly phase begins. The transmitter is first connected to the electrical insulation test system and then to the calibration system, making it ready for shipment.